Hey, what's up, everybody? I wanted to do a video to talk about setting up cue points on your track so that way when you load them up in your mix sets or while you're DJing events that your tracks are good to go. And I think it's a pretty easy process to stick to three to four cue points. Let's go. I've always wanted to be a DJ. DJ, 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 DJ. All right, so let's look at a few examples here. You know, here's some things that I personally don't like to see when I'm about to start a set or if I'm going through mixes, whether it's a live Twitch stream or I've got DJ events. Here's a couple of things that I'm not a huge fan of seeing. Um, that where there's no cue points on the track other than your pretty standard first cue point or seeing something set up like this. Not a, this is just not good because it's so crazy. The cue points are everywhere. And I'd rather see something along the lines of this. All right. The reason I think that three to four cue points work so well is because it's kind of like all you really need. And there's a couple rules that I've figured out when setting up cue points in my years of DJing. And this is a new approach that I kind of came up with within the last few years. I saw some videos and I just took some advice and mentorship, I guess, from, you know, tutorials and things I've seen and, and came up with this process. A couple rules that I always consider, no more than four cue points. And the second rule is always give yourself a chance to mix out of it. Okay, so let's look at an example here. Here's a track that I was uh, testing out in a mix. Uh, it's an unreleased track that I had. And so as you can see, you got your first initial cue point. Um, then we've got a second cue point that's like 32 bars. So, or so, I'm sorry, 32 beats, eight bars before the break or breakdown. And then another eight bars before the extended outro. Let's look at another track. All right, so this one has four cue points. You've got your first cue point pretty standard here. And then your second cue point is 32 beats, eight bars before the break or breakdown. And then we've got here at least 32 beats uh, before the extended outro. I like to do it before the extended outro because to me the extended outro is just your, your basic four on the floor beat, your kick, hi-hat, snare, or clap. And to me, I think that that can kill like the dance floor if that's when you're starting to do your mix. So I always like to give myself the chance eight bars before that, at least eight bars. If you want to go 16 bars, you can do that as well. Um, and then this cue point here, shout out to Laidback Luke. I saw him doing some live mixes and going through how he keeps energy high. So this is an option you can do. And I'll get more into this in a little bit of how to set this up. But this is basically a cue point at the high energy moment within your track. So that way maybe you're playing the first chorus and you want to maintain that energy on your dance floor or the vibe of your mix. You can just, as you're counting your beats, you can just punch into this final chorus or drop and then work your way out of the mix. I like that process. Let's do one together. Got this track here. And so... How, how would I go about setting this up? And this is a process that I think that you could do. So real quick, I want to take a moment to shout out my returning subscribers. Thank you for your support. If you like what I'm talking about right now, give me that opportunity and hit me with that thumbs up. Thanks. Okay, so our next cue point, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here before the breakdown. So breakdown seems to occur at this part of the song. I'm just reading the wave file. I like this song. I know this song pretty well because i've tossed it in my mixes and uh so what we're going to do the breakdown occurs right around bar 81 so we're going to go back eight bars 32 beats which would take us to bar 73 and we're going to add it so this is cool if you have to mix out pretty quick you can give yourself eight bars ahead of this create a loop whatever you want to do and it's a way to give you a chance to mix out early in this song again whatever's going to work for your mix okay the next cue point we are going to come over here before the extended mix which 
Let me come over here. It happens at bar 153. So we are going to go 32 beats back again. Simple math. That's eight bars and take us to bar 145. And we are going to set this one up. All right. So the bonus one, the bonus cue point to maintain that high energy in the mix. So in this track itself, because uh, the second drop is a little longer than the first drop, as you can see when you read your waveform here, doing some, I guess, your track waveform analysis. It would be like reading the grooves on the vinyl, okay? Um, you could place it right here at bar 121. Yeah, Again, it's always good to be familiar with the music you're going to play when you're DJing. But if you are setting up your tracks on the fly, you've downloaded some new music and you're putting a mix together, you can do this quickly. You can either set it up at, at this point or right here when the drop occurs. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, my settings in Serato, I have it set up so that they're in chronological order. So if, if you add a new cue point, it goes into time. So that's why this high energy cue point, even though it's the fourth one I just added, became my third cue point. Now what you can do is you can uh, adjust your colors. Uh, for me, I'm color vision deficient. So half of these, you know, they all look the same to me anyway when they're on the LED lights on your whatever your whatever equipment you're using. So for me, I just know like one through four. Again, you know, I think that this is a really easy way to set up your tracks to get your um to prepare for your mixes or even your events. I have found that this technique is useful, especially if you're doing like a private event, like a wedding, someone comes up to you and they're like, Hey, I really want to hear this song. You, you know, it's an obscure track and you don't have it in your, your library. So you download it and you have to quickly set something up. You know, you can put the track on the, on the decks and then find your way out of it. Cause you know how to, just analyze it really quick and give yourself a point to mix out of. So I think it works then too. Now, I think that this is really effective for EDM DJs because you can find your way through your mix. Again, you know, it kind of gives you that opportunity. You can mix either your tops and tails of the tracks, you know, the beginning of the end, you know, keep that similar motion of your mix, but you can also be able to cut out those really long breakdowns if that's something that you're not looking to do. For my hip hop and pop DJs, you know, the private events, you got to play that stuff. I always recommend at least giving yourself a, a cue point at the beginning of a chorus, whether at the end or in the beginning of the track so that you can punch back to that create a loop and mix out of that because most pop courses and hip-hop courses are about eight bars so that gives you something to work with and mix out of um obviously i just a caveat here for this is my battle style djs you're going to need more cue points because there's more stuff and more effective areas within your track that you want to punch in that's different. I'm not saying that this is like the main rules you have to stick by, but majority of my library, since I came up with this, this kind of approach to setting cue points is now I stick to three to four and I find that it works really well. All right. So anyway, listen, if you guys appreciated this video, you felt that this like, uh, this tip was helpful, hit that like button. Um, to my returning subscribers, thank you for watching my content. If you're new here and you like what I'm doing and you want to see more videos, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.